Hey there, how are you today? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. Thanks so much for being here with me today and agreeing to uh, do this interview. You guys, I have George Horn with Sharp Eye Photography and Design. Uh, we've actually known each other for a number of years. We went to high school together. Uh, we also have done some work together. Uh, I use George exclusively uh, for my listing photos. Um, I really appreciate your work and uh, kind of what you do, the, the level of um, the quality in your photography is wonderful and I really appreciate that. Um, so just wanted to ask a couple questions kind of specific to today's market and photography. Um, and to start out, given the kind of the market in Charleston and the fact that we're in like a white and hot market and inventory is down like 90%, why is it still important for uh, folks to use professional photography? Um, well, it's definitely still important uh, in the sense that you as a realtor are starting a brand, at least you should be, and a reputation for, you know, gaining new clients uh, and keeping them, the ones that you do gain. Um, and if you're not, you know, serious about that, at least, you know, provide something that's decent um, in the end because you want those returning clients and you want that word of mouth that you're good to work with and you pay attention to detail. Um, Real estate is uh, usually the most important um, or valuable investment that most people make, um, you know, so uh, it should always be handled professionally for the best possible outcome um, when they're selling, um, regardless of them selling, you know, quickly. Um, you know, the pictures are your fishing bait out there, you know, trying to lure in, you know, buyers. So um, if you're not using quality, quality images, you might be missing just that one person that would be wanting to put in an offer because they were just a little turned off by the pictures. Well, absolutely. And you hit that on the head, at least with my thought process, building a brand, you know, it's not just a business, it's building a brand. Um, yep. And how yep. you portray yourself in that brand is huge. And I uh, personally do almost all of my business through referrals and folks I know. So it's very important to me specifically to have a, um, you know, kind of that level uh, of service. And so I really appreciate that. Um, I know that the, you and I, I've, I've talked to you about this before, but my, my favorite slash least favorite photo on MLS is uh, a iPhone photo of a coffee table that has um, a prescription bottle on it and like some other various trash. It's so frustrating to me. I want to like throw my laptop every time I'm looking at it. Um, and that has to be frustrating to you as well. Definitely. Uh, I mean, that's one of the number one things that if we show up to a shoot and see stuff everywhere. We are just like, oh my gosh. Like, you know, so uh, it's definitely frustrating uh, for us, you know, please clear off countertops, get the house clean and ready to shoot. You know, at the end of the day, we're not, you know, we're not a cleaning service and you'd be surprised that how, how many realtors do kind of expect us to kind of pick things up and clean up the house to shoot. And that's just not what we're there for. And uh, we expect it to be ready to shoot when we get there. Um, you know, we're obviously happy to move little things out of the way and make sure the composition looks right. Um, but usually if it's a mess, we're going to say we're just going to shoot it as is, um, but always check with you first and run that by you, um, which I do. Um, I also do, I mean, I offer for an extra fee. I'll do a little extra cleaning if it's necessary, and I feel like it's needed for the shoot. Um, but just I wouldn't expect that from us to just do that, you know, because that eats into our shooting time and your time, and it can end up being more expensive for you because some photographers charge by the hour. Well, absolutely. And that's wild to think that, you know, you haven't had a like pre-listing walkthrough, a pre-photography walkthrough. I know um, in everything that we've worked together, uh, we've moved little things here and there. Um, but but yeah, I, I try to kind of guide my clients in that direction of getting ready for the photos and kind of trying to make your job a bit easier because in the end you also make my job easier. So I appreciate that. Um, you know, what else yeah. I also really appreciate is that you, uh, your photography looks real. Um, the images are high quality, but also 
um, the house looks as it does in the photos. So one of the worst things, in my opinion, is showing up to a home and it, it doesn't look anything like the photos. It's a waste of time, in my opinion. Right. Um, I'm sure when you show up to those houses and the pictures don't look anything like it, um, that's frustrating for not only you and, and them. And they probably even say that on site, you know, it doesn't even look like the pictures, you know, the paint color or whatever. And um, <clears throat> this is mostly due to, to the editing that was done for the images. Um, and I prefer to edit myself so I can guarantee quality. Um, but that can tend to lead into, you know, it's a little bit longer turnaround time when I'm editing it myself. It's usually 24 to 48 hours at the longest, depending on the difficulty of the home that was shot. You know, because sometimes I can run into some pretty difficult homes and on um, taming that light there in the room and always want to make it look the best. Um, there are, you know, um, some photographers, you know, they just don't know how to edit. And um, what they'll tend to do is, and um, you guys might not know this, and some photographers might kill me for telling you their secret, but uh, what whenever you see photographers or, or companies saying, oh, we offer 24 turnaround, you know, no matter what, on all shoots, what they're doing is outsourcing their editing over to editing teams in Vietnam and Thailand. And that's why they can get their fast turnaround is because when you shoot the images, you send them over to these editing teams overseas. And by the time you wake up the next day, the edits are done. But what that um, can, you know, what you're sacrificing there is sometimes quality control because you never are always getting the same editor and no one editor is the same as the next or as good. So you never know what you're gonna get sometimes with that editing. And that's why I like to edit myself to guarantee that same consistency and quality. Um, I, I do wanna offer outsourcing, there's nothing wrong with it. Actually, they're very good. But um, the, I think that's only necessary when you guys are looking for that very quick turnaround you know, time that some clients do need because they really need to get the house on the market. But Well, and absolutely, and that, that's something that I actually didn't know, but I do see a downfall to that in the fact that that person editing hasn't been home. <clears throat> so they might right. not be editing, you know, for our market, you know, they're not in our market. They're not seeing what a... A uh, buyer or seller is potentially focused on here, and um, yeah, I, I can see a lot with that. That uh, makes me appreciate uh, you doing the edits yourself even more. Right, and um, and you know, I try to get them done as fast as possible because you know, you guys do. You're you're mostly in time crunches, and you need to get these homes listed and sold for your clients. So, um, but 24 to 48 hours is is roughly you know, as long as it takes, um, you know, by the end of the next day is usually when I'll turn them around. But if you need them faster than that, that's when photographers are, are outsourcing. And you might just be sacrificing a little bit on quality, or you might get something that doesn't look just right. Because I notice a lot of those editors overseas, they'll desaturate the colors a lot or make the sky look a little too fake or something like that. And maybe the colors on the walls don't represent the home properly. So, but they still look nice and they can sell the home. But if you want proper representation, that's why I like to edit myself and guarantee that quality in the image. Um, that's really important. And uh, I sh showed up to a house recently uh, in McClellanville actually, <clears throat> and uh, it was in the national forest. So, you know, it was very secluded. And I swear I pulled up and I was the first one there and I'm like looking at my phone I'm looking at the house. I'm like, well, it kind of looks the same. <laughs> like, I mean, structurally, but everything had been changed <laughs> so much that uh, it really made me question whether or not I was at the same property. So that was kind of crazy. Um, I think you had some images that uh, we were kind of going to discuss yeah. as far as some editing. Can you see my screen? I can, yes. Okay, so what we're looking at here first is um, three exposures, dark, medium, and light, um, that are used for HDR imagery. Um, we tend to go from the dark image that gets all the details outside uh, to a medium and to a bright. Uh, what we do is we blend those three images together to make an HDR image. Or you can use a shot like this that's just straight out of camera, and it will probably probably be the cheaper route that you're going to pay for uh, in photography. And, um, but uh, the HDR imagery is what you'll, you'll probably see mostly 
um, on the MLS and what most realtors tend to go for, which is blending those three exposures, you know, of the medium, dark, medium to light to take all those qualities and details and the details out the windows um, and the shadows and blend it together into an HDR image that looks, you know, like this, which is, it looks pretty nice. And this is what most realtors will use to list and is a fairly, you know, is the more fairly priced, you know, type of photography that you can purchase from your photographer. And but, this is a beautiful image. And it also, you know, I imagine walking in this room, it looks like this, you know, with the lighting and the walls. Um, so, you know, that's just right. very appreciated after walking in homes that look nothing like, like what the picture shows. Well, this is, I mean, this, your HDR image is definitely going to get you some of those nice details out and, and the lighting, you know, fairly nice with a couple tweaks. And, but still, you can take it a further step um, from the HDR um, to going into using flash photography, which, you know, like you're saying, you want, you really want those uh, proper colors represented in like, you know, the paint on the wall, because um, some of this still kind of looks a little yellowish and green, you know, on the ceilings and the, a lot of that ambient light, that blue light from outside is being cast all over the walls and the ceilings here. So when, when you get more into the, the flash photography where I'm going around popping light, <clears throat> it tends to pull those details of the highlights you know, out more and the colors of the walls out better so that, you know, in the end, uh, when I'm done editing with a flash photo set, you come out with something more like this where the colors are even better and they pop a little more you get more details and objects and, and uh, around the room a little more pop out of the floor and it just looks even more you know natural softer light and it, it gives you that high-end kind of magazine editorial quality that is great for you all to use for marketing across the board whether it's mls brochures you know magazine ads or whatever and um you can kind of see the difference between this is your HDR, which you know obviously looks nice, but when you look between that and this, you can tell that slight bit of difference and that little bit extra amount of pop in the color and detail that gives it that really nice feel. And that's the flash photography is the way to go if you want this extra little bit of pop and detail and true color to the room. And Absolutely. What? And that is, uh, I mean, it's, it's a really beautiful photo. It shows the, the room and the lighting, um, great lighting in, in that area. That's awesome. So um, outside of this and the different quality of photos, um, is there a set number, is there like a golden number of photos that uh, we should aim to have on MLS? Um, there is, um, there actually was a study that I came across and I have an image to kind of show you that, which is uh, this one right here, which actually kind of goes um, and shows you that that golden number is right around, you know, 21 to 30, you know, about 25. Um, Obviously 31 to 40 and 41 to 50 are good too, but that's when you're getting into those bigger homes. And as you can see, this, this is all, you know, what is selling, um, you know, for, on a percentage uh, basis from one to 30 days. Um, and it's always been the properties that uses, you know, the properties that use these number counts. So, this is really awesome. And you know, what I think is interesting is using one to 10 photos has a higher percent, although it's still a low percentage rate, it has a higher percentage rate than 91 to hundred. Could you imagine looking at a hundred photos of a house? Like I, 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 why go look at it? <laughs> you know? Right. So yeah, I would say that golden number for your average size home is about 25 to 30. And don't worry about going over that because you don't want to, you know, overshoot and give people too much to look at online because you want to have some sort of, you know, I guess leave them wondering about it a little bit and want to, you know, really like what they're looking at online and be wondering and thinking about it more and then be like, you know what, I want to go see that house. I want to see more of it. And then that's when it's up to you guys to kind of, you know, make that sale and hopefully maybe get uh, an offer in. Absolutely. Uh, that 
That's huge. I, and like I said, I, I can't imagine looking at that many photos uh, and even even some of the ones into the 40s and 50s, like looking on MLS, um, you just get so bogged down in it. So um, that's also some really good knowledge. So um, in wrapping up and just kind of like a recap, what are some things um, that you would tell both realtors and sellers to advise, well, for realtors to advise their sellers and then for sellers to be on the lookout for when getting ready for um, photography for their home? Well, you know, um, like we said before, just make sure that it's clean. Um, vacuum, you know, dust, all that. Um, make sure lights are working in case they're needed for the shoot. Um, do a little bit of yard work. Just mow the grass at least, you know, edge a little bit. If you can't, you know, put pine straw down or mulch, you know, I get it, but just do those little bit of things and little bit of details that are going to make the house look at least a little bit nicer in the shots. Because like, like I said, this is your bait for luring your buyers uh, for your home. Um, but yeah, that's about, you know, as much as I could recommend. And just, and stay away from the real fake stuff, you know, like we're talking about and that you can't stand seeing. I mean, like this, you know, with this, you know, terrible fake orange sky that looks nothing like what is probably naturally there. I no. can't, all of us, most of us photographers can't stand this stuff. Um, and sometimes it's the realtor that knows how to edit and we'll go in and do this over top of our pictures and we'll be like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> that looks never. terrible. <laughs> um, and just not have them overdo it. Um, you know, there's, there's good ways to for it to be done like you know this looking a little more natural um and don't you know have them don't have them make your grass look fake uh, you know uh to the point to where it's not what your lawn really looks like you know again you're misrepresenting your home um, absolutely so just sure. and that's that's huge you know i mean you pull up and you're like wait is this is this what i wanted to come see or not uh so right. i really really appreciate that well, I really appreciate you taking the time out today to chat with me and give uh, everyone kind of an education on photography. Um, I look forward to working with you again in the future. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, I can't, for some reason, I can't find how to stop sharing the, the screen, uh, but if you can see me, you know, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. I can see you. And uh, yeah, we're, we're over on the side here. So I will see you later. All right. Take care.